Hello, this is Justin Seven with SportsbookReview.com and I'm here to teach you all a little bit about estimating your edge. I'm going to show you two different tools to help you do that. The first, I'm going to teach you a little bit about standard deviations and how that applies to sports betting. The second thing I'm going to do is show you a very neat tool to predict your edge going forward that some sportsbooks use when they're profiling players. For as long as man has been gambling, he's been trying to find patterns in the, the chaos he sees around him. If you are a gambler and you find a pattern in something that's random, you're going to lose a lot of money. A key skill you need to have is to distinguish whether or not something is random versus predictable. If you go into a casino, you'll see a little board, a video board next to most of the roulette tables that will show what the recent selections have been, what numbers it is, whether or not it's black, red, or green. And you'll often see people trying to predict patterns. Now you and I know that the numbers on a roulette table are pretty much random, but people will still look for patterns and those people who bet on the patterns are going to be making bad bets. You'll see you know, similar situations on a, on a Baccarat table. They give you a little notepad where you can track whether or not you know, the banker or the player won or whether it was a tie. And the reason the casino gives this information to you is because it is useless information and they're trying to encourage you to look for a pattern in randomness. Now I want you to compare two different occurrences. First, I want you to think about flipping a coin. If you flipped a coin a hundred times and you called you know, heads a win and tails a loss, let's call that one experiment. Now I want you to think about another experiment. You have a handicapper, a sports better, who makes a hundred plays. And you know, a win is a heads, a tails is a loss. But I want you to compare the two and look at are they, how are they similar? How are they different? Because the coin is pretty clearly random, but the question you have to ask yourself if you don't want to lose a lot of money is, is this handicapper? Is this random or is it a winning player? Or is your system winning or is it just randomness that you found? You may have heard math guys talking about standard deviations or sigmas. What is a standard deviation? A standard deviation or a sigma is just a number that helps describe what the distribution is around the average. Now if you look at 100 coin flips, you'd expect there on average to be 50 heads and 50 tails. Um, but how often would you have 55 heads or 60 heads? And that's the kind of question that a standard deviation helps you answer. 68% of the time, your number of coin flips will be within one standard deviation. Uh, for 100 coin flips, that would mean every time you ran this experiment, 68 or a little bit more than two-thirds of the time, it would be between 45 and 55 coin flips. Two standard deviations will happen 19 out of 20 times. Now this means on a standard 100 coin flip experiment, you'd expect there to be between 40 and 60 heads 19 out of 20 times. Now this is a graph showing the coin flipping experiment I just gave you. Your average is 50. 68% of the time your result is going to be between 55 and 45, which is one standard deviation. And about 19 and 20 times, it'll be between 60 and 40, which is two standard deviations. Now, I've told you that in this case, each sigma is about five coin flips each way. But how do you figure out how big a standard deviation is for a sample? For most gambling experiments where you have either a heads or a tail or a success or a failure, your standard deviation is the square root of NPQ where P is the odds of a success and Q is the odds of a failure. If these are about 50-50, it gets even simpler, and it's simply the square root of N, which is the number of flips, divided by 2. So for your 100 coin flip experiment, a standard deviation is 5. So how do you use a standard deviation to make money in sports betting? I like to use it as a starting point to look for either ideas of interest or handicappers who might be credible. Now two sigmas Two standard deviations above the mean would end up with a record of 60 and 40 yeah, if they had 100 plays. Another example would be to use it for some kind of technical analysis or trend analysis. Again, you want to find something that's two standard deviations. Now something you're going to find is that you don't find a lot of uh, gambling phenomena that give you uh, two standard deviations above the mean. The reason you don't find this very often is there aren't really that many winning systems. I have a very serious warning for you though before you start blindly following a person just because they're two sigmas above the mean. 
This is only a starting point in your analysis. Whether it's a handicapper or a trend or any other idea you have, this is the first thing you do. The second thing you have to do is provide a rational reason, a logical reason why this is beating randomness. Why is this not just a coin flip that happened to get lucky? Now the second thing I'm going to warn you about is if you look at enough patterns of numbers, you're going to find a pattern. If you look at 20 sequences of numbers, you're going to find one that looks irregular enough to pass this test, the two standard deviation test, one way or the other. Now, there's one system that works even better than using standard deviation to figure out if a player is going to win going forward. And that is to compare the price he got on his bet to where the market closed. Consider a baseball game between the Dodgers and the Braves. Assume the market price closed at Pinnacle at minus 104 on both sides. The average price is minus 100, which would be called the no-vig price. If you placed your bet on the Dodgers at plus 102, you beat the closing Novig price by two cents. Any player who consistently beats a closing number by two cents is going to be a long-term winner. If you have a math model or a handicapping technique that you think will win long-term, your way to test it is you write down when you're going to place the bet, look at the price at Pinnacle, compare your price to its closing number. Now if you don't want to wait till close, you can do it at exactly 30 minutes before it closes or exactly 60 minutes, but you want to do it at some consistent time no later than 60 minutes before the game starts. Compare the pinnacle price, the Novig price, to your number and write that down for say your first 100 plays. And if you're averaging 2 cents better than their closing number, you're going to probably have a 1% hold or higher against them. Now this kind of analysis scares the hell out of bookies. If you play at a sports book and you hit a 10-team parlay, or if you go into the casino and you beat them, they're laughing as you win because they know you're going to give it all back. But if you're beating their closing number, they're worried because you're going to take their money. Now there's one other group of persons you see who regularly do this, and those are called steam chasers. When you see the whole board light up, lines are changing everywhere, and you've got the guys who are coming to the small books and hitting everyone who are late to move the line. There's a reason the books don't like that, because these players are going to beat the slow movers. When you're looking at how much you're beating these Novig numbers, it should jump out at you how much just a few pennies matters. In fact, the winning players sweat over just a few pennies. They'll pass on a play because it's two cents worse than what they wanted. So remember, if you are going to be a winning sports better, you must beat the closing number. If you're able to beat the closing line by just two cents, you're about the one in 200 players that actually is expected to win long term. General rule of thumb is that for every two cents you beat the closing number on prices close to even money, you have about a 1% edge against the house. So if you're beating the closing number by six cents, you probably have a 3% edge long term. That's all for today. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at justin at sportsbookreview.com or send a PM at the same site.